Hey everyone, Z Slayer Dre here, and today I'll be reviewing Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, developed and published in a joint effort between Koei Tecmo and Nintendo. While the first Hyrule Warriors had its own contained story, this time around Age of Calamity is a direct prequel to the massively successful Zelda Breath of the Wild that was released on the Switch and Wii U in 2017. Obviously now that we know a Breath of the Wild 2 is coming sometime soon, and given the success of the first game, it seems like Nintendo is really focused on developing the lore and the story of this particular Hyrule. The first Hyrule Warriors was a really great merger of Zelda characters and Dynasty Warriors gameplay that led to a really fun experience, along with an immense amount of content. While Fire Emblem Warriors was not a direct sequel, it took the gameplay of Hyrule Warriors and started to refine it and added in some features that made it an enjoyable game, so I was really curious to see how they would improve upon those mechanics in Age of Calamity. In a somewhat shocking fashion, the story and cutscenes in Age of Calamity are also considered actual canon now in the Breath of the Wild lore, although some of the gameplay is not. I was really shocked to see this game announced. I, I just did not think there would be another Hyrule Warriors anytime soon, especially one that is canon, so let's see how well Koei Tecmo and Nintendo did this time around. To start off, since this game is very story driven, I will only be showing gameplay footage from early on in the game considering just seeing some of the characters' presence in the game can lead to potentially major spoilers, and I will leave out some story details as well. I'm going to guess that most people who are interested in this game played Breath of the Wild, but if you didn't, Age of Calamity takes 100 years before the events of that game, where the Kingdom of Hyrule is battling Calamity Gammon's forces. Using the Warriors game as a framework to show these battles was a great idea. You get right into the action in the first mission as you take control of Link and battle on Hyrule Field. You'll notice immediately that the art style of Breath of the Wild is captured perfectly in Age of Calamity, albeit a bit more blurry this time around. Throughout the campaign, many locations visited in Breath of the Wild will make an appearance, and this is just a really fun way to revisit the areas of Hyrule. For those who may be Zelda fans, but not necessarily Dynasty Warriors fans, the basic premise of those games is a one versus a thousand, although in reality ends up being quite a bit more complicated than that. There's been a ton of spin-off games in the franchise, and while each game has its own unique gameplay elements, all games will have you using combos and abilities to smash your way through hordes of enemies. I have to say, being a Warriors fan, of all the games in that franchise, the combat in Age of Calamity is maybe the best I've ever seen. While there are times where the combat can be unresponsive, it feels like a huge overhaul from the previous games, and captures the feel of the combat of Breath of the Wild and translates it very well into a Warriors template. Like in all other games, you can use your standard and heavy attacks together to form explosive combos that can really feel satisfying to pull off. Much like the original Hyrule Warriors, while each character has the same framework of combos, they all have a unique feel to them along with some special abilities. For instance, when playing as Link, you can hold down the heavy attack button at the end of a combo to extend it out, and Impa can absorb runes to create mirror images of herself and deal devastating damage. I know I saw some people worried that there would not be as many characters in this game as the first Hyrule Warriors, and without going into too many spoilers, I will say while there are not as many characters this time around, there still are quite a few to choose from, and they all have their own unique feel and moveset. While performing attacks, you build up a meter, generally known as a Muso meter, and once it fills up you can perform a monstrous attack unique to each character. These attacks can either wipe out huge groups of enemies or do a considerable amount of damage to a boss. Combat is rounding out with a dodging mechanic, which, when timed right, you can perform a flurry attack, exactly like in Breath of the Wild, which will damage the enemy's boss's stun meter. Once the stun meter is drained, you will be able to perform a huge attack, usually dealing a considerable amount of damage. Each character also has a unique ability mapped to the right shoulder button, which gives the combat some additional variety between characters. Link's ability will differ from weapon to weapon, but for example, when using a two-handed weapon, Link will execute an extra powerful attack that deals increased damage but also damages Link in the process. You can recover the lost health, but only if you quickly hit a button after you do the attack. If you do get hit before you do so, the health is lost. Rounding out the combat, you have your Sheikah Slate abilities, much like the ones in Breath of the Wild. There are four abilities available to each character, those being Bomb, Stasis, Iris, Rune, and Magnetism, and each attack can be different depending on that character. When fighting bosses, they will sometimes flash a certain symbol, and if you time it out correctly and use the proper slate ability, you can deal massive damage to the boss's stun meter. Speaking of bosses and enemies, there's certainly a great variety in Age of Calamity, 
basically every enemy from Breath of the Wild makes an appearance. While some bosses are effectively a color swap, this gives a good amount of variety to the combat having to learn the attack patterns of each boss and enemy, and there are some really great moments in the game going against larger-than-life foes. You also get to pilot the Divine Beasts, which essentially lets you live out the dream of being a bull in a china shop. On the ground you will defeat hundreds, sometimes a few thousand enemies, but in Divine Beasts you will obliterate tens of thousands of enemies. While they are similar in function, each Divine Beast has their own unique abilities, like being able to electrocute enemies or freeze them. While it was mindless at times, it was really fun to pilot the Divine Beast and gave a much needed change of pace to the gameplay. Like I said earlier, I don't want to get too much into the story to avoid spoilers, but through the main missions you'll be leading a campaign against the enemy moving from battlefield to battlefield. And for one of the few times in the Legend of Zelda series, Zelda is actually the main character and she absolutely kicks ass. She ended up being my favorite character to play as since she has such a unique moveset. She starts off using a Sheikah Slate and it absolutely demolishes enemies as she freezes them, throws them, and bombs them and eventually drives a minecart into them. She presents as a very relatable character. She has a stern father that gives her no leniency to deviate from her path that was prophesized and has to deal with everyone around her succeeding while she cannot activate her dormant powers. There is also the new character Teriko, who is an adorable mini-guardian that protects Zelda and provides a much needed comic relief in a rather serious tone story. Link of course also plays a focal point in the story, although I would have really liked to have seen more development out of his character. He is still just a silent, ever-vigilant protector of Zelda with little personality. Also, the pilots of the Divine Beast make an appearance, each with their own unique personality quirks. I would have really liked to have seen more of them, but the story moves at a fairly brisk pace, so with so many characters, unfortunately there's just not enough screen time to give all of them. One of the areas I was desperately hoping they would improve was the level design, and while they did in some small ways, it overall fell very short of my expectations, and most levels just ended up being your bog-standard Dynasty Warriors levels, although there was nothing inherently wrong with them. I think this is partly due to the power of the Switch. It just can't handle complex areas with tons of enemies on the screen. While most of the levels are pretty similar in design to older games, some of them have really big open areas where you could wage giant battles. Most levels were slim, snaking past that at a time made it almost feel like a linear action game more than a Warriors game. The one improvement I saw was that some levels featured interiors of buildings that were well made and had some actual mechanics to them, like traps. I would love to see more of this, and it gave some desperately needed variety to those levels outside of just palette switching. This time around, there was a huge de-emphasis on bases unlike in the original Hyrule Warriors. While there were some bases, they were not always a requirement to conquer, and once you did, you could just pretty much leave them alone, removing a pivotal and fun element to the gameplay of the first game. For collectibles and of spiders, this time around, you can find quirk seeds scattered throughout the levels. They were generally very easy to find since most of the levels were fairly basic, although they did find a variety of things to hide them behind, ranging from pinwheels to boxes. Overall, the level design was a mixed bag. There were a few standout levels and also some that fell a little short, although no level was outright poorly made. In between levels, you will visit the map, which is the same one as found in Breath of the Wild. From there, you have quite a few things to do, and a lot of time can be spent on this screen. They got rid of all the UI and menus from previous games and instead made all the functions a location on the map, so you'll have the blacksmith, stores, and quests on the map this time around. Each region of the map has quests, and once you do a certain amount of quests in the region, you will be rewarded with materials and various other unlockables. There is also the quest tab that you can use to unlock everything from new skills for characters, to new stores to buy items from, and even cooking recipes. You complete quests by paying materials and it can end up being a considerable amount of grind to unlock everything. On the map you also find the two mission types which are story missions and challenges. I've already gone over the story but the challenges reuse small sections of the story maps and can be completed for experience and materials. Depending on how you feel about extra challenges not related to the story, you may or may not be happy to hear that they are somewhat required to do. You will not earn enough experience, money, or materials from the story quests alone so you will have to do the challenge maps. Luckily, they are generally quite short, although some of the later ones do get longer. I was actually pretty surprised I had to do the challenges just to level up, and it felt like more of a way to pad out the story than an actual engaging gameplay mechanic. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad they're there, I just wish they didn't feel so required. So that's all the basics of Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. 
So now I want to go over what worked and what didn't and go into some additional detail about certain gameplay mechanics. To start off, this game was really not what I expected. I really just did expect something very similar to the first Hyrule Warriors just with a Breath of the Wild aesthetic. And while that is true in some regards, I would call the first Hyrule Warriors a Dynasty Warrior games with Zelda characters and I would call Age of Calamity a Zelda game with some Dynasty Warriors mechanics. Like I said earlier, the game feels more like a what if Breath of the Wild was a linear game than an actual Dynasty Warriors game. In some ways, that is a good thing. I do think they really improved the feel of the combat and most of its shortcomings really stem from the system it's on more than the actual gameplay. Unfortunately, it seems like the Nintendo Switch was stretched to its absolute limit and beyond an Age of Calamity and the game breaks down in some instances because it just can't handle it. The game is 30 frames per second at best, which is about half the minimum for an action game to feel right. At worst, the frame rate can straight up die with certain moves bringing the Switch to its knees and making the game look like a slideshow. That being said, it does mostly keep up the 30 FPS, but some levels and characters will make it drop consistently. Also, there's a horrible amount of pop-in, which for some people might not be a huge deal, but for me personally, it really brings me out of the game when I keep seeing enemies spawn into existence in front of me. And because of the frame rate dips, the combat can become completely unresponsive at times, which is a shame because it really does seem like if this game could run at a reasonable frame rate, the combat would have a great feel to it, maybe better than any other Dynasty Warriors game to date. The resolution is also pretty abysmal and can drop at times making the game look very blurry. While I prefer gameplay over graphics, there is a point where visuals can get so poor it can affect the gameplay and Age of Calamity definitely presses right up against that limit. And this isn't exactly a technical issue, but the camera is atrocious. Seriously, what is it with 2020 and terrible game cameras? Something that was figured out a decade ago they can't seem to get right anymore. There were quite a few times where I just could not see my character and could not tell what was going on, leading me to get my face smashed in by bosses on more than a few occasions. This would not have been as much of an issue if the levels were more open, and while some are, many have you in castle interiors with very tight walls making the combat feel very tedious and having to deal with a camera. Story-wise, this was one of the highest production values I've seen in a Warriors game, and going forward, I would love to see this level of quality in all Warriors games, something fans of the franchise have been begging for for years. While the story was not Shakespeare-like quality, it was a competently told story with a great range of characters with plenty of tense moments mixed with some generally funny comic relief. Like I said earlier, they made Zelda a very relatable character and I really like what they did with her. Also, I can easily see the new mini-garden Terrico becoming a fan favorite as he was absolutely adorable and there were quite a few amazing interactions between him and the cast. All in all, for anyone who really loved the story and lore of Breath of the Wild, I think there's a lot to like in the story in Age of Calamity. There are a few things I have very mixed feelings on when it comes to gameplay changes. I initially thought the map was a great idea that really cleaned up the menus from the previous games and presented skill trees in a new and manageable way. When you beat a story mission or even sometimes a challenge, new quests will pop up on the map. At first, after a story mission, just a few popped up and it felt very manageable, but about halfway through, after some of the missions, sometimes upwards of 40 to 50 new icons would appear on the map, and it felt really overwhelming. This was exacerbated by the story missions not giving enough materials to do all the quests, making the challenge maps basically required to unlock extra moves or hearts for all the characters. As someone who 100%ed and got an S rank on every challenge map in Fire Emblem Warriors, and who's obtained the Platinum Trophy in multiple Warriors games, I have to say, I didn't find a single challenge map that I really enjoyed outside of maybe the Divine Beast challenge maps. That's not to say the challenge maps were bad, but they really didn't add much to the experience for me outside of padding out the game. I was really enjoying the story and ended up being frustrated that I had to stop playing it to do challenge maps to level up my characters so I could move on to the next story mission. I did end up doing some story maps at lower than the required level, and while it's possible to get by, I wouldn't recommend it as later on some of the enemies become enormous HP sponges, and if you're underleveled, some bosses can take an eternity to defeat. There's also a few things that whether or not they are pros or cons will really depend on your gameplay preferences. For starters, the skill tree is completely removed. Some of its function was transferred to the quest system, like being able to unlock extra moves and combos and extra hearts, but the system is basically stripped away and it feels way too streamlined. This made leveling feel like an arbitrary way to extend out the game length and gate off content, and I think it might have been better to just have removed it entirely and have your character's strength depend on your weapon. Speaking of weapons, they were changed slightly. 
There is still a blacksmith and you can enhance your weapons, but this time around they have their own levels. They gain levels by merging one weapon to another, which gives the base weapon experience as it gains levels and increases its damage and potentially adds new skills. Each weapon has an icon and merging weapons with the same icon can transfer over abilities. You can eventually unlock ways to change the icons and increase a weapon's max potential level as well. This system ended up being very grindy and I found myself needing to grind money later on as even doing the story quest and a considerable amount of challenge maps still didn't give me enough money to level up the weapons on even just a few characters, let alone the entire roster of them. Unless you plan on doing every single challenge map and there's an absolute boatload of them, you're really only going to be able to level and buy skills for just two, maybe three characters at the most. There's just not enough experience or materials to go around to level up more characters unless you want to do a considerable amount of grinding. Again, whether or not you will find this to be an annoyance really depends on how much you enjoyed doing the challenge maps. But overall, they did a great job of capturing the feel of Breath of the Wild. You'll see a lot of the shops from Breath of the Wild along with most of the same sounds being used. There is cooking as well before each map you can choose a recipe that will give you a gameplay boost like adding extra damage to your attacks or decreasing damage taken from enemies. It shows that the team behind Breath of the Wild helped with the development of the game and it really ends up feeling like a mainline Zelda game because of that. Everything from the boss battles to the production value of the story really does feel like a step up from previous Warriors games. And I really hope that is a trend that continues since they are just really fun games, although I do hope they find ways to reintroduce the depths of gameplay mechanics found in other Warriors titles. All that being said, I give Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity a 7.3 out of 10. For fans of Breath of the Wild, especially the lore and story, this is an absolute buy and I think you will really enjoy Age of Calamity. For people who are fans of the Warriors games and not necessarily Zelda fans, I would actually recommend not buying it. They streamlined too many of the Warriors gameplay mechanics, and I feel like the story alone will not be enough to warrant a buy at full price. Unfortunately, Nintendo almost never lowers the price of their games, and it might be years before we see even a modest sale. While I love the Switch, and it may end up going down as my favorite console of all time, I do wish this game would come out on other platforms. Just being able to play this game at 1080p60 would work wonders on improving the responsiveness and solve some of the visual issues. I know it will never happen, but who knows, maybe someday Nintendo will put their games on PC. I mean, crazier things have happened, right? I have a ton of videos I'm currently working on, so if you did enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. Thanks so much for watching, take care.